Hi guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make this $20 Amazon wig look more natural. Alright, so I wanted to come on here today and I wanted to show you guys a couple things that you can do to make this $122 wig she's a hard front wig so there's some issues when it comes to hard front wigs hard front wigs are exactly what they say they are they have this hard stop right here at the hairline instead of having lace which would lay a little bit flatter blend a little bit better into your hairline and all of that a hard front wig is going to have a little bit more of a lift also because they use this plastic like rubber scalp for hard front wigs. They take the hair and they sew it on and then they fold the hair over and fold this rubber piece over and lay it in and then sew this piece under here. So essentially you have this big huge shelf right here of folded over rubber that really doesn't do you any good except make this not lay as flat on your head and make it not look as natural. So the first thing I always do when I get a hard front wig because there are some really, this is $20, I love the color, I love the beachy wave cut, um, not cut, but the beachy wave like curls on it. This is a very, very popular style right now. And I wanted to like kind of try this color and style out before I spend a lot of money on maybe a nicer quality wig. This is a great option, but it looks really fake. The first thing I'm gonna want to do is I'm gonna wanna make this look much flatter. I wanna get rid of this fold over here. So we're gonna definitely be doing that. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm really gonna kind of go into this part and pluck just a little bit to make it look a little bit more natural, not such like a straight pin straight part where it like kind of stops awkwardly. We're gonna kind of blend this part out and make it look a little bit more natural. Another thing we're gonna do to this wig, and this is more of a construction standpoint that I like to do to pretty much any wig I buy that tends to be a little bit on the cheaper side. They don't have this fundamental piece in them that I feel like I have to have in every single one of my wigs, and that is a back comb. So I always, always, always have to have a back comb here because I have a very weird shaped head and my wigs like to slide up on the back of my head if I don't have a back comb here. You know, lower price wigs don't have combs on them at all. So another option too, like this comb, this wig doesn't have combs in the front. I don't really use front combs, but I know a lot of people do. You can also add front combs to this wig as well. So the third thing we're gonna be doing is gonna be a construction based, not as much of an aesthetic base. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the easiest thing, which is to put that little hook in the back of this. So I'm gonna show you guys really quickly how I do this. So I do this. I do this a super lazy way. You can do this the correct way. And when I say correct way, I mean like the correct way because the way I do it is not correct. It's just the Jesse easy, doesn't bother me, doesn't cause anybody any harm, doesn't hurt my wig, lazy way. So what you're gonna want is you're gonna want this little wig comb here. You can get these in packs of like 15, 30, 50, 5 billion, whatever you want. I buy them off Amazon. I'll put the link here for you guys if you want. You can check them out, but you're gonna want these and I prefer the ones with the material and I'll show you why in a second. And then you're gonna want some super glue. So I like this little pen super glue. You can use whatever super glue you want. It doesn't really matter. I'm not even gonna lie. I have used nail glue before because it's pretty much super glue. But I've got super glue here. And what you're gonna do is you're going to flip your wig inside out here so that the part where you're gonna wanna put this comb is exposed. And then we're gonna take the super glue and I like to do it right here on this material area. And I'm going to dab this all along this part of the material and you don't want to do it on the wig that's a bad idea so then you're going to take this you want to make sure that the comb is facing up not down that's a common mistake that we make and then you're like oh crap i did this wrong and then you want to just press this down here for oh, 30 to 45 seconds and just make sure you get it nice and stuck on there with the felt just be careful it doesn't stick to your hands i really don't use a whole lot now you can do this, like I said, the right way, which would be sewing it on, which you can absolutely do as well. Hand sew it, machine sew it, whatever your heart desires. I'm just lazy. So I'm doing it like this. And I never have had an issue like with them coming off like this either. So it's just not really something that I've ever felt I need to do anything else because it does exactly what I want it to. And it's on there and it takes five seconds and I already have super glue at my house usually. So that's the construction aspect of what I'm gonna wanna do. Now the next thing what I'm gonna do, is you are going to need a pair of scissors. I recommend a very small pair of scissors. I love these ones, they're pointed, they're sharp, they're little, and they're really easy to get into where I'm gonna go. And that's really all you need. You can put this on a wig head if you want, or you can do this right in your hand. I'm gonna put it on the wig head just so I can show you guys exactly what I'm doing. I need to wash her, she's looking sad. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do here is, as you can see, there's this sewn on piece right here. And this is essentially what's holding this rubber piece down. And there's also all this mesh netting that's hiding all the stuff that we need to expose. So the first thing you wanna do is you're gonna wanna take your scissors, and this is the scary part. I promise you, if you can get through this part, it's a lot easier after this, but it's just scary because you're cutting and you're gonna be cutting hair. You're gonna see hair come off, that's totally normal. But what we wanna do is we wanna kinda cut straight across this um, felt band right here. So we're not cutting in the front, we're cutting really s towards this back area. And we're gonna just take our scissors here and we're gonna cut that. And that's gonna help expose and open up that rubber piece that's underneath. Give me one second and I will show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so now you see, ew, um, you see obviously you've cut some hair, which is okay, don't freak out, it's totally normal. It's just the hair that was stuck underneath here and folded under. And then now we have this piece right here of the rubber that's exposed and flat. So the one thing I wanna do is I wanna get rid of this big bulky thing because it's just gonna make my hair stick up more. So I'm gonna now take my scissors and I'm just gonna cut it right along that part line there just to get this chunk of felt and rubber off of this wig. And I'm just gonna cut around the block here and I'm gonna chop it off. So this is what it's gonna look like now. You wanna try to leave this last layer of, um, lace i did cut, nick it it's okay it just does help protect and hide the um the hairs from and you don't want the hairs pulling out because a lot of times with this rubbery stuff they pull out of the hair like really easily so i'm just going to take a little bit of my super glue and i'm just going to go ahead and um just kind of glue this down so that i don't have to worry later about the hair like trying to come out because that can happen I'm gonna flip her over and I'm gonna get rid of all this excess hair because we do have a lot of this just extra hair that we can kind of pull away from the wig. This is all the hair that we have taken off. It's totally okay, don't freak out. And I wanna pluck some of this out so I can cut a little bit more of this rubber off just so it doesn't look like the hair is folded, folding over into your head because that just it looks weird. And it's just a little easier to see exactly where we're cutting if we can get rid of some of the hair first. Um, just so I can tell I don't want to take too much off so I really want to see like just kind of where it sits and it also helps kind of blend out that so see how now we have this rubber piece that's still exposed we're gonna kind of cut that off as well so again this really is just very scissor heavy you just want to make sure you have a good pair of little scissors to do this with all right so I'm just gonna cut this piece off right here so it just kind of curls over you want to go as straight as you can but it's okay, you know, if you gotta go kind of multiple sections because parts of this we cut off more than others. You're just really trying to get rid of that curl over. And like I said, this is kind of where heat kind of comes into play to help a little bit. Um, you got to be careful, obviously, because a lot of these cheaper wigs are not heat safe, but just the tiny, tiniest amount of heat makes a really big difference. And then I'm just gonna cut you see this right here, this is the start of a track. I'm just gonna kinda cut it off just a little bit right on the tip just so I can get rid of that knot that's there. I don't wanna mess with the sewing too much there just because that is kind of a structural thing. So we're just gonna cut that all off and now you can kinda see it lays a little flatter. I'm just gonna take the back of my hot comb here and just kind of help take that rubber and flatten it out just a little bit. It just helps kind of Smooth it out. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna go ahead and kind of make this part look nicer. So the nice thing about the rubberized scalp is it does kind of make it look like there aren't any knots or anything like that, but they tend to kind of only do like an inch of parting for some reason, even though they have a decent amount of this rubberized stuff coming all the way back. So I'm just gonna go ahead and extend this part a little bit. So I'm just gonna take it, I'm gonna part it out so that it's parted. And then I'm just gonna kind of widen the part a little bit. I don't wanna do too much because I don't wanna see too much of that fake plasticky stuff, but I want to make the illusion that the part's a little bit, a little bit bigger than it is. 
well then it came and then i'm going to bring this up a little bit so i'm just going to pluck this little area here to kind of bring this part back some more because i feel like especially with these if you don't kind of pluck the part out it just kind of disappears so i'm just bringing this part all the way back here giving it more of a deep part and then i'm just going to slowly kind of fade it in i'm just going to bring this down and just do a little bit more plucking and you just want to be careful that you don't over pluck it um and also what the part looks like is really going to depend on what your preference is for parts i like to have a wider deeper part that's just me i like to put this little kind of little t triangle kind of thing here that's again personal preference not something you have to do just something i like to do and then i just like to kind of go in get anything right here that maybe i missed and that's really it it just helps make it look 10 times more natural and i'll show you i'll put her on it's going to make a huge difference in the way she lays on your forehead so i'm going to go ahead and just brush out this excess hair we have so i'm just brushing her out to go ahead and get rid of any of that excess stuff there and that is that i'm going to take some of my dry conditioner spray her down that's going to help get rid of any static or weird like you know frizz that you might have and then another thing that i always recommend with um like cheaper wigs is you're gonna probably want some dry shampoo dry shampoo is great to kind of spray on the root area of a wig if you notice it's a little shiny like plasticky shiny not healthy hair shiny um and that really helps and then the dry conditioner helps just especially with wigs that are a little bit um you know on the cheaper side it helps a lot with like tangling because as you can see this wig hasn't even been worn yet and there's still some tangles in it just from it coming out of the box and us just doing what we did to it so i always like to use dry conditioner on it before i brush through it just to make sure that i'm not causing any damage and i can prolong the wear of it as long as possible but again it's 20 dollars, so i'm not expecting you know too too much from it but i'm gonna go ahead and throw it on real quick and show you guys the difference of what it looks like now versus what it looked like before all right so this is her on after i've done everything as you can see she just lays much much flatter right here the last step that you can take if you want because i know a lot of times these rubberized areas can be weirdly colored a lot of times they're like a grayish white or whatever but they usually don't match your skin tone so what you can do if you want is you can go ahead and take a sharpie in the shade that you want to match as close to your skin tone as possible and you can actually sharpie it in there you can't really take concealer or makeup or anything like that because it's really just not going to stick and it's going to rub off but you can absolutely take like a little sharpie pen they have like michael's has tons and tons of shades and tons of colors or buy like a pack where they have a lot of different like shades in there and you can actually change the color of the scalp that way so that's my recommendation for that i know i've been asked that before so that's just what i would recommend doing um this one isn't too bad so i'm just gonna leave it as is but it makes a huge difference just a couple little changes like i said i have that clip in the back now so i just feel like it's a little bit more secure on my head um I, it's laying flatter here i don't have this big giant bump here or bulk here i could technically if i wanted to take a piece of wig tape and glue it and kind of tape it down right here also to help keep it where i want it to be which will also help add to the illusion that it's you know a little bit more blended but that's it for $20. Definitely not bad. Like I said, I really love the color. I love the style of it. Um, I'll see how long it lasts. But again, for $20, like if I get a couple uses out of it and no one can tell it's a wig, I'm happy. So if you guys like this video, I'd really appreciate giving me a like for it. Um, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notifications on any videos I do in the future. And thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you on the next video. There's so much hair all over my floor right now. Like, it's everywhere. The hair is everywhere.